Good morning from day number two here at Port Aventura World in Spain. The sun is shining and we're back for a second day at this park. If you haven't already, make sure you check out day one yesterday where we got on quite a few rides, uh, but nowhere near as many as we want to. And of course, we got on Uncharted, the new indoor roller coaster. So check it out if you haven't already seen it. Of course, it was a poor day for operations yesterday. The worst I've ever seen here at Port Aventura. So we've craved in today, haven't we, Charlotte? We have. So we bought the Express Pass, so it was 55 euros then you can pay an extra five euros to be on the front row of the ride. Yeah, so it's cost us in total 120 euros today for Express. It's not very often um, that you'll actually see us buy fast tracks on this channel. I like waiting in the main queues, I like seeing the operations, seeing how they are, and that's the thing, you shouldn't have to buy fast track to have a great theme park experience. However, unfortunately, at Port Aventura, um, it is needed. And with what we've seen yesterday, we thought we can't have another day like yesterday. Like, we didn't get loads done, did we really? We didn't, and it's one of them where they do prioritise the express queues a lot more than the main queue, so they're trying to force you into it really. Yeah, they do. I don't agree with it at all, but still, we're going to make the most of it today. We'll get round, we'll bring you lots of on-ride POVs, starting off with Furious Backo. We didn't even get on this yesterday, and like I say, we've paid the extra five euros so we can get on the front rows. Uh, along with that though, we're going to get to experience Templo del Fuego today, um, which is fantastic. Charlotte's never seen that either. I really so. don't know what to expect. Obviously, I know it's fire, but I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite attractions, and you've got to come in summer to get that because it's only open during the peak summer period and of course Fiesta Ventura tonight as well uh, which is the big late show on the lagoon here just behind us and this is the reason why we've gone for the express passes today advertised wait of two hours 50 minutes almost three hours for furious Baco. crazy oh I do love the area around this ride all the Mediterranean buildings and of course the track color itself Manufactured by Intamin, it's an accelerator coaster. The launch is absolutely incredible on here. And of course, on the front row, we'll get a great POV for you all. We have the views looking out over the park are fantastic from here as well. Let's go and ride, Furious Baco. I would not want to be waiting in that. It's all the way back down here. Massive cattle pen queue line on the inside there. And when I say massive, I mean huge. No wonder it's advertised at two hours, 50 minutes. And here comes the train, less than a five minute wait, and we're on the front row just here. Almost a three hour queue just outside. Yeah, Express, they really prioritise it here. I don't agree with it at all, but we just had to do it today. Let's go and ride, back out, front row. Oh, looks like, oh, there, there we go. We can say, looks like we've only got one screen on. <laughs> a few error messages keep coming up. There you got the onboard pre show. The monkey would normally come from the left hand side, but he's broke. All the cogs start spinning. There we go! Woo! Just there, front row back out. Oh blimey! Oh, how is that for you, Charlotte? Oh, not <laughs> it is intense. Wow, that is crazy. Furious back out. Oh, what a ride! On right footage there from the front row of the absolutely crazy, it's been taken over by monkeys, furious Baco. How did you find that? I have to say, I absolutely love the launch on furious Baco, but it'd be great if I could just launch and then get off. <laughs> it is so rough. You're like shaking about as you're going round. It all depends where you set on that. Of course, the launch is spectacular. Zero to 83.9 miles an hour. It's a brilliant launch. launch. And yeah, it's not just flat. It's actually on a bit of an angle as well, upwards angle, which is great. And you get a bit of airtime at the bottom. Then of course you're going through trenches.
bushes, through a tunnel, through that inversion, and then over the water, as you can see there, just behind us. Uh, I do have a soft spot for that coaster. It can be unbearably rough sometimes, especially later on in the day when it's been running in the Spanish heat. Um, but I me, I do still like that ride. Uh, but yeah, you really want to be on the front row on the inner seat. That's the smoothest seat on the ride. Towards the back, it is a bone shake. It yeah, really it is. Yeah, completely is. You just like this the whole way around. <laughs> Furious backache, some people like to call it. Uh, but anyway, we're going to make our way around the corner now and head towards the Grand Canyon Rapids. There it goes. Hey, back home. And yeah, I do love this Rapids ride. Let's go and get on it. Just around the corner then and into Far West, you've got the awesome Grand Canyon Rapids. Look at the theming of this. And yeah, it's always a soak of this one. Fantastic ride. Yeah, I love this here. Uh, you've got the train track coming across and the bridge just kind of collapsed. Fantastic theming. It's got a massive cattle pen queue down there that looks quite full. So I'm glad we're skipping that. Let's go on, Grand Canyon Rapids. Looking forward to this, Charlotte? Yeah, get me soaked. You want me soaked? I normally say that, but I'm so hot. Oh, fantastic. Let's go on. And here we go then, well I hate to say it because that really shouldn't be the case, but it really is worth getting the express passes here, isn't it? Like straight on there, watch your cab, <laughs> yeah it's definitely worth getting them, because there's no merge points for anything like that, you're literally straight in. <laughs> A lot of the time with fast track at parts, it is merge points isn't it? And yeah, you're literally straight in, straight into the station or low platform, Hooray! Oh, on the Grand Canyon just there. <laughs> This is what you want, a bit of a cool round, Charlotte. Oh my god. Nice trip around the Grand Canyon at PA. Look at all the rock work. Hashtag rock work. It's a fast one, this. It is fast. It's quite a short ride, this, but I love the fever. It's very fast. <laughs> Fantastic! That's what we like. <laughs> Ooh. This is the best bit now. Waterfalls. Yeah, literally builds the speed. You got all these hills. Hey. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, and we saved ourselves a 50 minute queue there as well. Waterfalls. Whoa. This is a nice catch you here. Oh, to be honest, we didn't do that bad there. It depends if this big water effect's on at the end, because uh, literally down here they've got a massive sprinkler. Yeah, I don't know if it's on or not. I've not seen it in action. <laughs> yeah, short ride at 1 minute 43 there, but how was that? Oh, not too bad. Yeah, it was a nice sprinkle that I'm one. I'm on edge in case that sprinkler comes out. I don't think it's on. Like, there used to be a big sprinkler here at the end coming out, but oh, that was fun, that was. I enjoyed that. It was great fun that was. I do love a good rapids, especially in the Spanish sunshine like this. And one of the best themed ones out there. I mean, I love all the rocks around. Looks absolutely brilliant, that does. Really nice ride. We're making our way then down to another water ride now here in Far West, the Silver River Flume. There yeah, you got 24 crazy barrels over there, the break dance. And of course, buffaloes, which is the dodgems inside there as well. Crazy dodgems, that one. It's absolutely massive. I do love this themed area of the park though. It is gorgeous around here. Did you enjoy the rapid, Charlotte? It's only really the sprinklers has got me and I'm drying out now. Yeah, it's well, so fat. hopefully we'll get a nice soaking for you on here. Oh, sure. <laughs> Buffalo Rodeo, that's like the junior dodgems there. For those of you that don't want to go on the big ones for like the kids. It's nice how they have those right next door. Love this bridge just here as well. Always looks fantastic. And of course, the station for Silver River Flume just over there. Looks like it's been replaced with all the wood on the side, which is good. And yeah, I think they've took a few trees out here as well. So yeah, it seems to be a lot more open, and that's Al Diablo. It looks like you can get on it from this side, but you can't. You have to go around into Mexico to get on that. But yeah, good to see the water wheel in action. I don't think that was working last time I was here. Yeah, let's go and ride. This is advertised at 90 minutes, 1 hour 30 for this. So yeah, I'm so glad we went for the Express. Don't like doing it, but you know what? It can be worthwhile at Port Ventura. It really can, especially with the shambolic operations we saw yesterday. Literally straight on to Silver River Flume just here. Beautiful day for riding on these water rides. And of course you've got four big ones in this park. Angkor, the Splash Battle and Tatuki Splash are on the other side of the park. Yeah, they've definitely chopped some trees down here. It feels very open, very barren. This is one that I'd love to see more theming around. Some more rocks would be nice around here and a few other bits. It looked better when there was trees in though. There's Shambhala and of course with us having paid for the express 
goal we'll get to ride Shambhala on the front row which is very rare to do without having express so I look forward to that here we go <laughs> look at that that's one of the wettest drops on the ride that is that's fantastic it is really good there's Alde Ablo not the most exciting my train that oh someone has to someone has to hola nothing <laughs> Much more enjoyable start to the day than uh, yesterday so far. Shouldn't have to be this way, like I say, but uh, yeah, make the most of it. We've paid out, we've given in. Let's go on down this drop. You also see how well themed the Uncharted show building is from up here as well. Stampede over there, making our way down to this drop. But look at the skyline though of this park. Fantastic, with Shammy V just over there. Hurricane Condor, of course, went on there yesterday. No express on that one. Hey! Here we go! Woo! <laughs> oh, lovely. Fantastic. How are we in the back? So, You're right, Absolutely there. so. Oh! <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, it's what you want in the Spanish sunshine. I'll be drying about five minutes. July 2023, here at Porto Ventura. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I love this bit because it shows you the massive drop that you're about to go down. Fills up the suspense and of course some good interaction with all they have loaders here as well. We're going down there, yeah. Oh. <laughs> get ready for the big drop. Wait for it, wait for it. And here we go. Woo! Oh! <laughs> oh, you what? Seats fall. Oh, oh my god! Look at that! Oh, what's happened? It's fell off onto me. What? Oh my god! Oh, blimey! That's not very good, is it? Oh god! See, it just fell off. It must have been the force of the drop. Oh, blimey! I wasn't expecting that. All oh, right, footage there from the Silver River Flume, and yeah, I can't believe that just happened on there. Like, what happened? Like, it came down the drop, and I felt something hit my back. I was like, "What's that?" It was the seat. It had come loose. I had to push it back in. I bet you thought it was water. Something coming towards you. What? That is crazy. That yeah, needs sorting out. That does, doesn't it? But uh, there you go. <laughs> See coming forwards, yeah, I'm sure they won't use that boat again now, but uh, there you go. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue on down here in Far West. Maybe go and do the other side of uh, Stampedo. We did the red side yesterday, maybe do blue side. Make the most, of course, of the express pass. Really nice, this area of the park, though. Like I say, Far West is my favourite. What was she doing with that bottle then on her head? <laughs> oh, blimey, anything goes at Port Ventura. Right, let's go and have a go here on Stampeda. Like I said, we did red yesterday. Let's go and do blue today. Yeah, express entrance is actually down at the exit for this one. Let's go and ride. Stampeda, or as I like to say, Stampena. <laughs> it was yesterday anyway. Literally straight into the station. And on to Stampeda. Blue. Woohoo! Ready for the slowdown on the lift as well. We wait for the other trains. Of course, to clear that block section. <laughs> yeah, this has been much better. We've had uh, much better train design. Like I say, these aren't the originals that used to run on here. Like, look at these bars here, and a big problem is actually this at the side here as well. Really kind of digs into you. Here's the bags on ride as well as you can see. Bags on. There's Tomahawk. That's a nice little woody, and it runs Millennium Flyers. Old Shammy B over at the back. And it's going to be Stampeda. Here we go.
even gets the claps that does all these years on. Oh god, what a woody. On right foot, he's there from the blue side this time on Stampeda. I think that was any better today, Charlotte? I think both sides are just as bad. We <laughs> just really need some new trains, especially going around some of the corners. You're getting whacked into the side, but there's just no padding to protect you. Yeah, that's the thing. It would be so much better with Millennium Flyers, but I tell you what, I do really like the layout. There's always some good interaction on there, and there's nothing like seeing the other train coming towards you on the other side. And also, that time we were lucky because Tomahawk was going around as well, so it's like three wooden coaster trains all like interacting together which is fantastic but uh, no it could be a brilliant ride that I do appreciate how they've been doing some retracking on there uh, but yeah they need to do the whole thing and then get some new trains on and then it'd be a brilliant wooden coaster they've also got lots of flat rides here at Port Aventura World including Volpalu just over there sadly it doesn't operate very well it used to spin a lot more uh, than it does now but yeah it lifts up then each individual gondola just kind of shakes side to side but yeah it's nowhere near as good as it used to be but uh, yeah it's an opening day classic after all 1995 when this park originally opened but yeah we're making our way now here into Mexico to go and do an attraction that I've not done for many years and in fact it only ever opens in the summer now seasonal operation it is of course Templo del Fuego I tell you what, it feels weird to see this open. It's been many years, the Temple of Fire here in Mexico at Port Aventura. So yeah, it's not a ride, it's an experience. You go through, you've got the pre-show and then into the main room itself, which literally is a Temple of Fire. I really like this. It's a shame that it's only seasonal, uh, but you know what, it's a spectacular show. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Lots of great effects in here. Let's go and experience it. I'm so glad that we've got Express. The queue is absolutely massive around the corner. And that's the thing with this, it's not like a continual thing um, because, yeah, it's only one group every 30 minutes. So it can take quite some time, hence why everyone sat on the floor just here. But it's worth it. Not done this for years. Yes, get that.
Well, there we have it, Templo del Fuego. It was great to see that show again. It's a very exclusive attraction now here at Port Aventura. And yeah, I really enjoyed that. So yeah, of course, you've got the two sections. The first one, which is about a seven, eight minute pre-show. Uh, of course, the stone is the key. And um, that's what you find out. I mean, it's mostly in Spanish, of course. We are in Spain. However, they do have some English translation going on in parts of it as well. And yeah, you see him turn the big stone. And then you get some special effects, don't you? Yeah, so it sort of went pitch black. And then these like bats came. And then there was like um, air canisters coming out the floor and it got me I was like this yeah it was good <laughs> it yeah, I do like that really nice effect and it's like the bats are coming down in your legs basically yeah it was like snooping about <laughs> and then of course the big door opens up and you make your way into the main event that's what it's all about the actual temple itself and yeah it's amazing in there you're just seeing the full show of that and yeah it's really cool because of course um, you've got the water in front of you um, you're kind of standing on this tiered area and then yeah you see the whole temple in front lots of interaction of course with the crowd getting people whooping and cheering the heat is appears and the temple just explodes you got fire in front of you you got the big blast you've actually got the fire overhead as well it really is fantastic i mean how cool was that in there i think it's one of them because i've never seen it before i didn't really know what to expect but it was absolutely brilliant the fire was so close you could like feel the heat on your face but i absolutely loved it, it was brilliant you've also got like the big skulls that come up towards you and you get a little splash on there as yeah, well so it came up i was like yeah <laughs> It really gets people because it's quite scary actually with the music as well. Normally though you get the main jump scare at the end and it wasn't working. The whole platform normally just drops a little bit. Um, not by much but it really gets everybody at the end. And I noticed there wasn't quite as much fire in there as there used to be. But I'm still glad we got the big blast towards you because that's a good one. And yeah some of the smaller bits. But it's fantastic that is. Well worth going on. You've got to have a lot of patience with that attraction. Um, of course if you aren't using Express because it can take some time. Uh, but yeah I'm so pleased that we got it. It was worth coming in the summer to see that again and of course Fiesta Ventura that we've got coming up tonight. Summer exclusives. Another nicely themed flat ride just over here, Yucatan. Yeah, Port Ventura really do get it right when it comes to bringing in flat rides into the different themed areas. I mean, so many of these are all park originals from when it opened. And in terms of Tembo El Fuego, I didn't actually mention that, um, but that was put in during Universal's ownership of the park. And as I mentioned yesterday, there's a lot of rumors and speculation that Universal may be interested in purchasing back Port Ventura and turning it into their Spanish resort. So that'd be really interesting. Can you imagine the wisdom world of Harry Potter instead of Ferrari? I certainly can. Next up, we're making our way to El Diablo, Trend de la Minor, just down here. Yeah, let's go and give this a ride. So this is the roller coaster that I said you can see from far west over by the Sil River Flume, but can't access from that side because it's actually here in Mexico. And yeah, it's got some good bits of theming around the station area. However, the ride itself hasn't got the most impressive of layouts. However, it's a good family coaster and the kids seem to enjoy it, you know, even though really it's nothing spectacular. Let's make our way down here, express, and we'll give this a ride. We'll take you on. And here we go, on El Diablo. Nice little drop out of the station, better at the back that. Whoa. Yeah, you spend most of your time going up lift hills on this thing. Well, the station area looks quite pretty over there. There's a good bit of theming around. Would have been nice if it was all in a mountain, of course, like maybe Big Thunder. You do get a great view of Shambhala and Dragon Khan, though, a little bit further around. Uncharted. They've done a cracking job with the building on that. It looks great. This is where you get your interaction with Silver River now. On the old flume down there. Enjoy that ride on that. Woo! Nice drop. Hooray! <laughs> Enjoying it there, Charlotte. I love Aldo Black. So I don't, you really like it. Don't you? I like it. That's where you get that great view now. A lot of the Port Ventura promotional imagery is taken from up here on this lift hill. Look at that skyline. Very impressive. Fancy dropping down into a trim break, Charlotte? I certainly do. Here we go. <laughs> Climb you up a lift hill. Drop me down. And wait for the trim. There it comes. <laughs> so then go up another lift. Oh. 
Swift Hill the road. <laughs> I imagine it all rocks. Yeah, it's poorly designed this one. I remember John Wardley talking a little bit about this one and how obviously he designed a lot of the rides here, but this and Silver River were too late into the construction phase to make any changes. So they had to stick with the boring layout of this. I think Silver River's pretty good though. Wow, look at that view. It's hard to imagine it without Shambhala now, pre-2012. Scanlays down in that queue line, I certainly do. You just feeling all these buildings. Oh, there you go, that's your ride. I'll be up one. What a coaster. <laughs> oh. Some on ride footage there from Al Diablo, Trend de la Mina. Yeah, not the most exciting of rides, that one. How was it for you? I really like Al Diablo, it's so much fun. You think so? Yeah, just going up all the lift hills, quite funny, isn't it? it? Well, it's funny, yeah, but it doesn't make the most uh, exciting of rides, that one. But uh, still, it was good to get back on there and see some views. Because yeah, the skyline of Porto Ventura looks epic from on there as well. And yeah, that's the thing. You need things for everyone, don't you? The kids seem to enjoy it on there. And yeah, you need a good variety of attractions, um, of course, at a park. Anyway, because we upgraded with five euros uh, to have the front rows, it means we get front row on Dragon Khan and also Shambhala. So of course, we had some POVs on there yesterday. Um, but yeah, not on the front. And it's very rare to get on the front, especially of Shambhala, unless you've got the express passes. And we've got a dispatcher on the front row of Shambhala, even though I've been riding this coaster for 11 years. Not had loads of fronts over the years. Hundreds of rides on it, but not loads down here at the very front. Of course, with it having the tiered seating, you've got the actual front row, which we're on, and then you've got the two over on each side as well. Nice bit of interaction with Dragon Khan down there. Hey! Oh, I love that. Good timing. It seems to be a little bit faster today again, the train sent out. Which is good to see. Nothing spectacular, but better than yesterday. But yeah, we went, got on the front row. Literally, two minute wait. Here we go. Wow. Hang time is awesome on the front. Look at this. Was that Charlotte? Oh, that was amazing. Oh, front row, like you really pushed up into the maritime hills. Yeah, oh, incredible. What a coaster. Still one of my favourites. Really is. Shambhala. Woo. Take back what I say just about operations. Yeah, we've been here a few minutes already, and of course, we've got the train in front of us just there, and the one in the station still not yet dispatched. Oh, dear. Oh, well, there she goes, just behind us. Front row rides there on the absolutely awesome Shambhala. I'm going to try and catch it now. Ready? Hey. Oh, it nearly worked. Uh, well, there we go. How was your ride there? Oh, what an amazing front row. I don't recall ever going on the front row before. It was fantastic. It's that hard to get without the express gold. That's it why. Is. Uh, but yeah, that was fantastic. Really enjoyed that. And you really whipped up into them airtime hills, which is fantastic as well. And yeah, some really good floater airtime on there. And of course, the ejector hill, the speed hill, which is really low to the ground just after the turnaround. That's great on the front, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. You just feel so much more open on the front, which is great. I think that's also due to the train design on there. With it having the staggered seating as in two at the front then two at the side when you are right 
right on that very front. You've got nobody next to you either side. No, it really makes it. Yeah, it does. You're really open uh, to all the elements on there. It's a brilliant coaster. It'll always be one of our favourite B&Ms. The layout, the themed area, uh, absolutely fantastic. And of course, right next door, you've got Angor, which is the splash battle here. And yeah, all this landscaping's grown so much over the past few years as well. Looked really barren this did when it opened, a bit out of place. Yeah, massive splash battle, one of the longest ones out there. It's like a 12 minute ride. Take you all through this little village and all the way around here too. Yeah, this is another one that's covered by the Express Pass. So yeah, go and jump on this, take you on. Angle. I like how they also built this bridge just here too. Not just for views of that, but also the skyline. That's the thing, they do some things here so well. Like how to, you know, present a part. Like, look at this, like it's stunning. And then of course you have the operations. <laughs> yeah, we were waiting again there on the brakes for quite some time. Yeah, it's very nice all around here. Massive ride this is. There's another look at Shambhala from here too. Yeah, these trees have grown so much around here since this opened. Yeah, again, take you all on Angle, you see. You're coming on Splash Battle, Charlotte. Sit in the shade it's so hot. Oh, you've had a lot of bites as well, haven't I you? Know, whilst you've like been here, my bites are so bad, and I think because the sun's reflecting, I'm just going to sit in the shade for a little bit. Yeah, you have a bit of a chill out, <laughs> and I'll take the viewers over here on angle. Let's go and have a splash battle. Love this. Let's go and squirt the Spanish. Skipped about a 35 minute wait there for angle. And yeah, here's a look at all the theming, which is fantastic around this back section. And you've got a few animatronics as well, so just this snake just here. Give him a squirt. The Spanish snake. <laughs> We've got some gorillas just over here too. And yeah, of course you can shoot the targets as well as you're going around. As well as squirting other riders. Tiger just down there. Looks in a bit of a better state. This does than when I came last year. There's quite a lot of effects not working. Yeah, it's nice to see. Like these elephants are working again. And yeah, there's going to be a bit of TLC round here. Shambhala is just the perfect backdrop here, acting as the mountains, of course, at the back. Time for a squirt. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and into the little fishing village just here. Oh, he's on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, the targets all seem to be working, which is great. <laughs> I do like how there's little scenes going on all around the side. Oh, it's got a wet back. That's what you want though. Splash battles are perfect in this weather. Not in Staffordshire, at Alton Towers. <laughs> oh, here comes the bucket. Here we go. Oh, oh he's starting. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. We're drying like five minutes, so it's okay. Oh, listen to the roar of the mighty dragon car. And yeah, we'll get on that next on the front row. Take you along for another pub. Hey! <laughs> Woo! Splash battle! Here we go, time for a bit of a battle now. Let's get the gun lined up. Yeah! <laughs> hey! Oh, we can reach them, but they can't reach us. Yeah! <laughs> oh, brilliant. She's not enjoying that standing up there. <laughs> oh, we got another one. Here we go, another boat. Let's get him! Hey! <laughs> ah! Hey! <laughs> ah! Here we go again! Ah! <laughs> oh, loads of interaction points, love that. Shammy B! Well, that's Angle! Oh, here I am then, soaked. You That's are right soaked. On Angor. It was good fun though, that was. You missed out, Charlotte, on that. Yeah, but I came round to here and stood there and Sean was like, oh, my gun stopped and then he blasted it's me. Great, yeah, <laughs> well, that was a good fun ride. And yeah, the theming's really nice around there. And the landscape is really starting to take over now, which is fantastic. Like I said, when it opened, it looked quite empty around here with the theming. But no, it was great fun, that was. Anyway, fancy a dragon car on the front row, Charlotte. Let's do it. Let's go. And whilst we're still down here, just thought I'd show you Angor's entrance. Really impressive. All the elephants down here. And yeah, just really nice. Have you got some uh, cream, haven't you, now as well? Yeah, I managed to get some mosquito like roll on because my bites are so big. Yeah, you got some big bites these yeah, past couple of days. Um, so I needed to get something, then I did some stuff in the shop. Oh, that's good then. Ideal.
Wow, look at PA for up there. Woo! Right, footage from the front row there of Dragon Khan. It really is a beast of a coaster, operating here since 1995, opening day attraction. How was your ride, Charlotte? I have to say, the front row ride was fantastic. Like, the views at the top of the lift up was brilliant. Yeah, and you really get some fantastic forces on that ride as well. A bit too intense for me. Oh, but yeah, it was good to get a front row on there. And yeah, here's a look at the Great Wall of China area just here. And yeah, a lot of the time now, you don't really walk over this because you end up walking around the back you know by Angor and Shambhala so it's always worth making the time to go and actually walk over this because it's very nice and you get some awesome views of both Shambhala and also Dragon Khan is up there as well I tell you what though I think Dragon Khan could do with the track repaints the supports were done when Shambhala was being built but you've got to think that's still like 11 years ago now yeah I love this view just over here absolutely fantastic we're having a much better day today here at Port Aventura mainly of course because we got the Express Shouldn't have to be that way, but it is. I think every time we come here now, we'll have at least one day of express. Just to make it bearable, really. I do love the park, though, and the feeling of the park. It is stunning. If only those ops were on top tier, like some of the entertainment and just the park atmosphere and walking around and all the themed areas. And here's another great view with Hurricane Condor over there, the big theatre. In fact, we've just been to see Divas again. We absolutely loved that yesterday. So check out the day one vlog if you haven't already seen that. And you, of course, you can see highlights from the show. Yeah, this is a great view spot just here. And I like how this hasn't been updated. A little kind of throwback to how it used to be, of course, before Shambhala was there. It's like, yeah, take a picture from this point. Of course, just showing Dragon Khan on there. And then obviously now, yeah, Shambhala towering over since 2012 down there at the back. Beautiful. And coming down this way over the Great Wall actually brings you into this main part of China. And yeah, there's not really loads of rides around here, a couple of smaller flats. However, it's just a nice part of the park with all the buildings. Just the general kind of vibe walking around here. You've got the teacups just over there, there's a little dragon ride. And yeah, when you come around the corner here, the view really opens up nicely of the water. Love the theme in there at this park. It is incredible walking around all these different worlds. The buildings are gorgeous around here as well. And you've also got this little port area. And yeah, they used to run these boats over to Mediterranean and back. And it was a beautiful journey all the way around the waterways here at Port Aventura. But yeah, these haven't operated for quite a long time, sadly. I mean, the boats are still here, um, but yeah, it never seems to be open these days. I've not been on them for years. So yeah, hopefully they can come back at some point in the future. But yeah, it's lovely coming all the way around here and then out onto the main lake itself uh, with some stunning views of Furious Baco as you pull in as well. But yeah, as you can see, it's all just kind of abandoned around here. This part of the park, this area of China, uh, just hasn't really got loads going on. I mean, you've still got the bubble show around the corner but other than that there's not really loads to see around here no oh, i do love this archway just here as well it reminds me of chinatown back in london and they've gone for another ice cream just here as well look at that she was very generous on the scoops which i'm very pleased about 5.95 So we've made our way now over into Polynesia and that ice cream was absolutely delicious. You can see a little bit of off-ride footage there of Contiki, which is the swinging ship, beautifully themed. And here's a look at the Tuki Splash. 
Hey, the big water ride here at Port Aventura in Polynesia. And yeah, this is a great ride. You got one small drop and then the big finale double drop out of the volcano just there. Just me going on this one because obviously Charlotte does have quite a big fear when it comes to water rides, especially these ones where the water comes right over the top of you. It's not too bad depending on where you sit, but uh, yeah, just me going on this time here on Tatuki Splash. Yeah, come and join me. Take you on for a POV. And the queue is all the way out the entrance here. And bear in mind, it's got a long queue line, loads of cattle pen. And yeah, I am so pleased that we got the Express. It's more than made up for it today. Yeah, Express entrance, round here to the right. Let's go, Tatuki Splash. And here we go into the famous chewing gum tunnel. <laughs> Wait about five minutes in Express. There's like about 50 people through. Chewing gum. Which isn't great for the main queue. Look at that. Chewing gum. Oh, here we go. This is where if you sat on the front, it comes all the way over. There's Charlotte over there. She's got an ice cream. <laughs> oh. 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 There she is. She's got a king cone. Hey. Oh, this is enjoying that. Yeah, if you're on the front there, it literally comes right over the front. And yeah, I was talking about a Tatuki special. Wow, when you're around this corner here, a Tatuki special is if you're literally about to go up the lift hill and another boat comes down and you get the massive wave come over. Uh, yeah, literally, if we were just around this corner and that boat would come down, you get a massive splash coming over. But yeah, I don't think we're getting a Tatuki special today. <laughs> And here we go at the top of the lift hill, making our way down to that big finale double drop. Yeah, this used to be the heart of the volcano here, and it had erupted out every so often. Yeah, you can see it's not worked for many years. Probably talking 15 years, maybe more than that. Uh, here we go. Oh, are you ready? Hey! Woo! <laughs> That's why Charlotte didn't come on. Look at that, absolutely soaked. Long to Spain in July. Perfect. That caught me off nice, that, eh? Oh, here come the guns. Oh. Well, there we go on right footies from Tatuki Splash. I do love these big water rides, especially here in Spain. Perfect setting for rides like this. Yeah, absolutely fantastic that is. And actually, if you're on the front row, you get more wet on that first little drop. Uh, and that's because, of course, there's a lot of weight in the boat. The pressure going down comes right over. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the big finale double drop just here, which is great fun. You can get a little bit of air time. Hey! Oh, and just avoided it up here on the exit bridge. But yeah, it was good fun, that was. I'm drying off already. Oh, now there's a chance these are about to get a Tatuki special, as I call it. One coming around the top. In fact, they are. Here comes the boat. It's got to be perfectly timed. This is it. They're going to get it. And you're about to see what it's like. Here we go. Ready? Oh! Tatuki special in action. Fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we wanted. <laughs> Oh, it was good fun that was. Really enjoyed your Tuki Splash. And also here in Polynesia, you've got Wreck Experience, which is an eight euro upcharge scare attraction. We're not going to do it this time because we've done it so many times now. However, um, it is quite good and well worth it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you are coming. It's definitely worth it. The theme in there is brilliant. It's normally packed full of actors as well. Yeah, if you've never done it before, fantastic. But yeah, I've done it quite a few times now. So we're going to head around this way into Sesame Street now. Sesamo Aventura. And take you for a walk around here, show you some of the rides and also as well have a ride on Sesame Street, Street Mission, which is the dark ride just down here. And here it is, Sesamo Aventura, opened here in 2011. Really nice family area. You've also got Tammy Tammy, which is a small little junior coaster. Smallest coaster that they've got here in this park. And here you've got the big treehouse down there at the bottom. And so much more. This area was very much inspired by the version called Fantasy Kingdom. That's the one, Fantasy Kingdom, <laughs> Gardaland in Italy. I had to think for a minute there. Not Fantasy Island, <laughs> Fantasy Kingdom. Yeah, very similar, except the tree house there is massive and it's actually got a Vekoma Madhouse underground. Yeah, check out our vlog last year from Gardaland if you haven't already seen it. Yeah, you've got loads of great little flat rides around here too. Up this little monorail around the top, Coco Pilotto. Excellent views of the Port Aventura skyline from here too. 
And you've got Magic Fish just over here. It's a nice little flat ride. Very similar to Hydra's Challenge at Legoland Windsor back in the UK. So they've just got um, the setup here with the boat and the one here on this side. So yeah, they've not got two for capacity. But yeah, that's Magic Fish. Quite quiet, actually. Walk on. Magic Fish. Well, before we go on Street Mission, we're actually going to go on the train just here. Because you know me, I love these. And yeah, they used to run it on a very silly system where you can actually only go up one station and they made everybody get off the train. But now you can actually do a full loop round again. So yeah, we're going to jump on the Union Pacific Railroad here for a full tour around the park. We'll get a bit of footage and then we'll get off here again after the full loop and we'll go on Street Mission. It was just in, so we thought we may as well do it. No waiting. Awesome views of Dragon Khan from here on the train. And that's why I love these transportation rides, just to get awesome views like this. And I'm glad it's actually acting as a transport ride again now. Because like I say, it was silly before. Here's your view. Oh. Yeah, literally, they made you get off at every station. The past few times I've been here, which I really don't know why they were doing that. Panda. Beautiful view. Never gets old seeing that view. And here we are pulling into Far West. So yeah, they've got three stations on the Port Aventura Railroad. One here in Far West, the one we got on at Cessna Aventura, and the other which is at Mediterranean, by the park entrance. Back on the move again now, looking out over all the Ablo and Silver River. You enjoying the train ride? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, one of my favourite views in just a moment in the bar. Beautiful view with the bridge just there, the Mediterranean behind it. And of course, Red Force over there in the distance. Let's pull it into Mediterranean now and then we'll stay on and head back to Sesame Street. much to see on this journey from Mediterranean back down to Sesame Street however when you get further down here you do get a great view of Shambhala's turnaround section so I'll show you that in just a moment you can see it coming up you get it much closer in just a moment and there it is what a view So what these trees have grown over the past 11 years you used to see it really clear not as much now it takes about 30 minutes give or take to do a full loop round there on the port aventura railroad did you enjoy that charlotte yeah, i really enjoyed that yeah fantastic right we're heading on to sesame street street mission now yeah have a time's wait of 20 minutes not too bad at all but yeah managed to use everything that was on the express pass worth pointing out this isn't on there hurricane condor isn't and a few other bits aren't either uh, however you can pay extra for this one um so you literally just do this like a solo express that's why you've got the entrance just there but yeah it's not on the main one that we purchased but i got my money's worth out of them today oh as soon as you come into here it smells of cookies now this is probably the quietest i've ever seen this they're not too bad at all. I guess a lot of the shines come off this now. It's a few years old. I remember when it first opened, it was very busy. That's the case with a lot of new attractions, though. Here you got the pre-show up there. That's Grover. 
Fantastic animatronic. My guy walks along the top. Twenty minute wait as advertised. Interactive track the star ride. Yeah, the guns are really weird on this. Oh, 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 Right, animatronic. On right foot is there from Street Mission. How did you find that? I have to say, I absolutely love that dark ride. It's just fantastic. It's the perfect mix between screens and set piece, and there's just so much going on. You got a lot of animatronics in there as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, loads going on. I think the guns, as much as they don't look great, they operate really well, yeah, don't they? They just work so well. I just love it. Like the Big Bird animatronic, oh, it's so good. Yeah, Big Bird's amazing in there, but like you've got the scenes where you're kind of on a road and you're going round. It actually feels like you're actually on a road. Like it's fantastic how they do it in there all the different props and the really nice blend uh, between the screens and the props which is fantastic it really is and of course all the theming on there was done by Sally Dart Rides the same company of course that Port Aventura brought in to do the theming over on Uncharted it really makes you think oh Frank Khan's so noisy it, what went wrong with Uncharted obviously budgetary reasons um, Sally do a great job with theming uh, they've done so much fantastic stuff however they clearly haven't been given the budget with Uncharted uh, because the theme that they've got over on that ride is great uh, but it's nowhere near an experience like this as it, this it's here it's such a shame because if we knew that the budget was there Sally Dart Ride would have done such a good job with Uncharted oh yeah that's the thing but uh, this is fantastic I it's a brilliant it. ride it really is and uh, yeah, the theming's great, the screen quality, the ride system itself is a full package and I really enjoy that a lot. It's one of the best rides at the park. Back down here in Mexico then now. And yeah, we're going to head down to Tomahawk over in Far West. Just thought I'd show you these in action here. 
the big Mexican hats. Who remembers when there used to be one of these at Drayton Manor back home? my favourite. <laughs> I used to love them. I'll tell you what she also loves just over here. Big slow. These are so good. So what you do is you buy this for like five euro eighty, and then the refill's like three ninety five. We've had loads. Yeah, we've had loads of these. That's not too bad, is it, for a big refill? And the initial payment included one refill as well, which was fantastic. Kept us nice and refreshed. We're on our final day at Port Aventura. Well, it's just gone 8 p.m. and yeah, it's getting much quieter now this evening, which is good. So we're going on to Tomahawk just here now, which is the little wooden roller coaster in Far West. Features Millennium Flyers. This actually rides much better than Stampede. Climbing up on Tomahawk just here. Sun's starting to go down. We're out Port Aventura. that is really nice little wooden coaster that is tomahawk and yeah we only wait about five minutes which oh, is good is running two trains yeah it's much quieter this evening than it has been which is good much quieter than last night too i've got to say look at the show building for uncharted it does look fantastic from outside uh, the exterior has added so much to this area i was worried thinking it might have ruined the skyline but it hasn't it's added to it hasn't it which looks fantastic really so good it just looks real does it no i think we're gonna go for another ride on there of course if you want to see on ride footage and our full review we had a couple of rides on there yesterday so make sure you check that out then we're gonna go for single rider again because yeah that tends to work out um, really good when we did that yesterday <laughs> Well, we've had three rides now on Uncharted here at Port Aventura. You just saw Charlotte coming in there on the front row as well. And yeah, I've got to say, the coaster itself really is fantastic. But you really do realise after doing three rides how poor the theming is after that first scene there. Uh, there's just hardly anything to look at at all, is there? I think it's such a shame that Port Aventura haven't had a higher budget to be able to theme the yeah. entire ride because it really lacks it. Yeah, honestly. But uh, let's just talk more about the ride system itself because, yeah, it really is fantastic. Of course, you mentioned how you've got five launches in there. However, you're on your side at points uh, that spike is brilliant because it's not a vertical spike but you kind of head up and then it twists onto its side and then you launch down on your side which is fantastic I isn't it i just think the whole layout of the coaster works so well the launches are fantastic on there some really good elements but where's the theme in oh and then of course in terms of the coaster towards the end you've got that screen section you saw it yesterday probably in the pov how there was the screen on the ceiling and then of course you've got that drop you actually drop down backwards and then as you're doing that drop you get to the bottom and then you turn around as you enter up into the offload area uh, the coaster itself is fantastic i actually think the roller coaster is better than gringotts um at universal and of course i compare that because it's the same style of ride you know even though this is only one train um instead of having two connected to each other um but yeah i tell you what the coaster what intamin have done with that is fantastic They've isn't done it an absolutely fantastic job it's so much fun and the theming that sally dart rides have done is great however if pa had given more budget it could have been one of the best indoor coasters in the world however the theming really lets it down i noticed on that time you can actually see um, a lot of the sensors everywhere um, inside uh, normally that sort of thing you don't notice because you've got a lot of other things to look at of course they need ride sensors for safety but you don't normally spot them and also I even spotted the station this time whilst I was in other parts of the ride yeah I was going round I could actually see you waiting on the offload yeah, I, I couldn't believe that like looking across you can actually see up into the station if anything it just needs completely reworking theming wise on the inside let's hope that there's more to be done in there I really hope so in the future because how it is it really feels half finished inside very disappointed with Uncharted in terms of the themed experience but the coaster is great fun while the sun's gone down here at Port Aventura World in Spain we've just had a back row night ride on Shambhala absolutely fantastic there's one thing that just take away from the night rides though and it always has done ever since it opened and that's the fact that it has actually got lights you can see them there and they're not actually to make it look pretty they're literally just there to film you whilst you're going around on the ride 
and yeah, they're shining at you throughout, so it does take away from the experience a little bit at night. I tell you what though, Dragon Khan's got some nice new lights on there, and yeah, they're not kind of shining in your face throughout, you know, you can just kind of see they're on the side for effect. But yeah, here comes Shambhala again for us to see. Absolutely fantastic. Look at the beauty come down here. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, well, we just had our last ride there on Shambhala of our visit here to Port Aventura. And yeah, it's having a walk around now, seeing the park at night. One of the best parts for lighting. Like, and look at Hurricane Condor there. Looks stunning. The camera doesn't do it justice. They got loads of nice themed lighting all the way around the park, which really is fantastic. Look at that. I'm back down here in Far West, just to have a look at the Uncharted show building at night. The exterior looks amazing, both in the daytime and even better at night. Look at that, the subtle kind of lighting shining up there, the big face on the front, looks amazing. Worth pointing out though, I wouldn't leave your first ride on there until at the end of the night, because they close this a lot earlier than at park close, so bear that in mind. Uh, I'm not too sure why, because there was no time saying it was going to close early. Um, but yeah, when we came off, maybe about 45 minutes ago, an hour, uh, it looked like they were about to close it. So yeah, bear that in mind if you are coming. But yeah, exterior looks great. And a look at the other buildings here in Penitence Far West. The Cattleman's Bank just over there, the Cavendish Dry Goods. I do love a good frontier themed area. And this is certainly one of the best. It's massive as well. It's humongous around here. So many rides, so much theming, and overall a brilliant area. They even get the flooring right. Because look at this, it's like you've even had the wagons coming down here, like grooved into the floor. Fantastic. Well, we're back down here now in Mediterranean after having a nice stroll around parts of the park at night. And of course, we're going to be here now to come and see Fiesta Ventura. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant last night, wasn't oh, it? it was so good. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Yeah, we're going to share lots of highlights for you coming up in the vlog. Of course, if you do want to see the parade that's also about to happen just here again, uh, check out the day one vlog here from Port Ventura. And uh, yeah, we covered the parade um, yesterday. And coming up now, we're going to share with you all Fiesta Ventura. Best place to watch it is around on this side actually on this side of the big boat um, that you can see here in Mediterranean. It's the best place to be to watch this awesome show. Here's some highlights for you all over the next few minutes. Welcome to Port of Ventura. Tonight we embark on an exciting journey of dazzling sights and sounds. Accompagnez nous au tour du monde en voyageant à travers des pays excitants, pleins d'imagination.
we go with some highlights from the absolutely awesome Fiesta Ventura. I've been seeing that nighttime show for many years. Granted, I've not seen it for a few years. It's actually been updated since then. That is the best I've ever seen it. The soundtrack's been remastered. There's some new effects there. And it's absolutely awesome, isn't it, Charlotte? Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. Like, the floats were so good. I love the men on, like, the jet patch with all the water. The fireworks was fantastic. It was so loud. There was just so much going on. It was brilliant. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's so much more than just a fireworks show that so many parks have. This is a full experience. And what really sets it apart is them floats coming out on the water, especially the dragon, which is my favorite. I, like I love the that. Dragon. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I think the sombrero is a good one they come out as well. The whole show is fantastic. It's about 15 minutes in length. It's fully themed into the park and of course taking you on a journey around the different themed areas. And then of course, uh, we talk about the entertainment in general. That is something that Port Aventura do so well. The shows and entertainment here are fantastic, aren't they? Like the Diva show we saw was absolutely brilliant. That's why we went to go and see it again. Yeah, and check out yesterday's day one vlog if you want to see highlights from that. Of course, Templo del Fuego, that was great to see today. And that's the thing, you've got to come in the summer to see Templo and also see Fiesta Ventura. So seeing both of those for the first time in quite a few years has been great. And then of course we talk about the overall park. The theming and the themed areas here um, are wonderful. However, it gets overshadowed by the operations. I've been visiting here since I was a teenager and I've never seen the ops as bad here as I have this trip. Granted, they were worse yesterday than today, but they've still been terrible, haven't they, today? It's just such a shame. It's like they're really forcing people to buy the express passes because the main queues just don't move. You know me, viewers. Like, I don't like to buy the express passes, and that's because I like to just show you what the experience is like. For if you don't want to come and spend extra, nobody should be forced into buying express. It should be one of them things that is completely optional. And of course, technically, it still is here. However, they make it very, very difficult for you here if you don't have it. Two hours fifty, we skip. Tom Viewers back earlier. I can't like. believe it. Like, without the express, you're not going to get loads done. Yeah, and they are genuine queue times as well. I've seen them before, I've waited in them, but I'll tell you what, how slow um, that some of the lines have been moving here has been not great at all. Um, so, yeah, I really hope they can sort out the operations. As much as I love the park, the theme in the atmosphere, um, however, um, operations have really overshadowed that. Enough for me to say I've got no plans at the moment to return to Port Aventura. It's just such a shame that the park's been run so badly. Yeah, I've never said that before because I love this park. I always have. It's one of them that for me, you know, I've grown up coming here. It was one of my first parks abroad here in Disneyland Paris. But how it's been operated at the moment is bang out of order. They need to sort it out. It's not fair um, on your general people who are coming here. Um, they really need to sort it out. In terms of Uncharted, it was good to come here and see the new ride. I'm glad they've got an indoor coaster. It's something else indoors, which this park needs. Um, but again, I feel like they need to finish off the interior of that. I feel like the budget's just been cut completely for it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But uh, there we go. It has been nice getting back to PA in the summer to see the entertainment. Uh, that's been our highlight. Um, but yeah, the general operations have been abysmal here. If anyone from Port Aventura is watching this, please, please sort this out. Um, it's really affecting what could be one of the best parks in the world. You walk around this place, you see that show at the end, and you think, this is amazing. But then you go on to some of the rides and the, how they're operated. It is terrible. It absolutely is. But uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for joining us here on Theme Park Worldwide. We'll always be honest in our videos. At the end of the day, we want to show you what the experience is like. It's not cheap coming out to these parks. And I want to make sure that you're all getting the best value that you can do. Um, it costs a fortune coming to these parks, so you really need to know uh, what it's actually like down here on the ground. And you've seen it over the past couple of days, how Port Aventura is currently operating. Anyway, we're making our way now down to Terra Mystica next in Benidorm. We've never filmed a vlog there on the channel, and yeah, really looking forward to it. It's coming up next. And then of course, we're heading to Parker One in Madrid for a Gotham City Escape, oh, aren't so we? Excited. It's gonna be absolutely awesome. But from Port Aventura, that leaves us with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. We'll see you in the next vlog.